Oh, Hughes. I don't know whether he's looking for Jungberg, but he's found him. What a way to start an Arsenal career. Frederick Jungberg on as a substitute for his debut in the English game, and he scores against Manchester United. Off goes Jungberg. He's done the trick again. Freddie Jungberg scores for the fourth Premiership game in a row. Jungberg, he's got the better of Terry. Freddie Jungberg! Arsenal have produced two absolute stunners. Freddie, man, so good to see you. It's been <laughs> so nice. long. I'm happy to see you. Um, I remember this, you might not, but I told you, I told you this before. In 98, I believe I'm correct, you made your debut against Man U and I was in the stands in the north end at the Hi at Highbury, the old stadium, and you came in. When you made that debut and you scored against Man U, could you have imagined at that point that you're going to go on to accomplish what you did for the club? All the leagues, the FA Cups, the Invincibles, all the goals you scored? Uh, of course, like, you never know in any walk of life what the future holds. And uh, of course, as a young player, you, 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 you hope and you think you're going to have a good career. Yeah. So, of course, you couldn't uh, imagine what will happen. And of course, that was not bad. Like, came to Arsenal to win things. That was the, my main goal why I picked uh, this club. For me, winning is everything. And uh, so of course, like I couldn't say it, oh yeah, I assume this and that, it's important to win. So I hope that would win at least. Yeah. <laughs> For the American viewers, Seattle Sounders, they saw you play there. Um, in 2009, this team enters MLS, they have to do something really big. And then they go and sign Freddie Lundberg. And you come there to America, what was behind your decision to come there? Because I'm sure there were still many options at that point for yourself. Uh, yeah, there was. And a lot of people in Europe thought I was crazy to go to the MLS. Um, I think I was at the stage of my life. And I've spoken this for a long time, but I had quite a lot of uh, attentions and stuff in England. And um, I felt that I stopped trusting people and became a bit of a recluse. So I said, I need to make a change in my life because I'm quite a sociable human being and I like my life so I said no that's it and I want to go somewhere where people maybe not uh, know me as well and uh, I can do something totally different in that way of my private life and stuff and uh, I went to Seattle and uh, I liked what I saw I liked uh, the city and uh, I had an amazing time. Good ball. Oh, Lundberg's behind the defense and he scores a quarter of an hour into the game. Exquisite finish, and we talked about that impeccable timing, fantastic goal. What memories do you have, like kind of from Seattle? You mentioned there the Open Cup, remember that? Um, I think you had the shot that came for a rebound from Montero, if I remember correctly. Maybe, a yeah. good memory. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of great memories, uh, great teammates, I must say. I had a great time when I was there. Um, the fans, in the stadium, we had a full house all the time, so you compare that with anywhere else in America, you couldn't. That was one thing that I really, really liked because it felt a little bit like I was in Europe. Sometimes I felt that was difficult when you played away sometimes. But the warmth of the city, the people, I became friendly with some of the people in the, in the Seahawks and everybody. What I try to explain to people here is like how nice people were and, and friendly and maybe yeah, different to what I was used to. I'll be honest with this part. If someone said to me in 2009, 2010, you know, what's Freddie going to be doing in a few years? Co I wouldn't have said coach. I would have said maybe open a restaurant, continue modeling, I don't know, whatever you were doing. But you're a coach. So was this always in your plan or how did you get an interest into actually becoming a coach and now dedicating your life to it? No, it's not my plan, so you're correct. I, so. <laughs> <laughs> I like my life. Um, no, how did it start was like, I think, when yourself, when you retire, so you, you dream, at least me, I draw, dreamt about oh, I can do whatever I want, nobody's going to tell me when I wake up, I can, don't have to run, but I don't want to run, all that kind of stuff you're dreaming about for like 20 years. And then when it happens and you're not having to do for a year or two, you're like, what's the point? I can only play this much golf and I can only like just sit at home, that's boring. So I then got some other coaches and stuff if I should coach and then I asked some of my national team or Sen and some what do you think about me being coach or do you think it's just a stupid idea and they were like no we think you can be really good at it so we would like you to do it so I was like okay I'll give it a shot 
So then I, uh, I started with Arsenal 15s, then 16s, then 19s. Then I was assistant in the Bundesliga with Wolfsburg, and then now I'm back here for this. So it's been a journey, and you try to get better and better every day. It's a bit like football when you played. And, um, but it it's, uh, sounds bad, but it's hard work, different to be a player. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I want to ask you this is obviously when you played here at Arsenal, especially you mentioned you were so much in the limelight, you know, always. Now, in Seattle, you've been gone for many years, people in the States. What's your life like now? What's for you when you're not coaching off the pitch? What are you up to these days? What are you into? What's going on off the, off the pitch? For me, the limelight came as a negative from playing football, playing good football. But that's how it is, and I'm part of life. So now I'm, you're one of the few people that have, I think this year I've done one more interview, apart from you guys, because that, I try to uh, stay away, and I'm quite happy with that. And um, I now have, uh, I don't talk about my family, but I have two children. And for me, it's football and my two children to play football with them or play with them in the garden. That's what's important to me. And um, try to do a good job in football, but we probably average 11 hour days. So there's not much uh, else going on uh, than those two things. <laughs> Sorry, I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's normal. And then I've got to ask for people, people in Seattle, one day we have to get you back to Seattle, I believe, to attend a game. You think that's a possibility or not? <laughs> uh, so, no, I've spoken to sometimes with Chris and, and then like, it would be nice to come back. Um, I, I, we, we had planned to stay a lot, lot longer in Seattle because me and my girlfriend at the time, we, uh, we loved it. I think it's an amazing city and I would love to come and see it. Pretty Lundberg comes out. A rapturous round of applause.